안녕하십니까 니콜라스입니다 and as a front-end developer sooner or later you are going to be asked to implement a feature that most web applications need infinite scrolling infinite scrolling is what websites like twitter TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube all have. They detect when you are about to reach the end of the page and quickly load and add more posts to the end of the page to give you the illusion that you can scroll forever. This video isn't specifically about infinite scrolling. This video is about the API that makes it incredibly easy to implement, the Intersection Observer API. The Intersection Observer API will watch an element and let us know when that element is visible to the user. That's it. So let's see how it works. Here we have a scrollable page that has a circle at the end of it. Using the Intersection Observer API, we will detect when the circle is visible to the user. So we can run some custom code and perform some animations, for example. The HTML of the page is very simple. All we have is an empty div with a circle ID. In the JavaScript side is where the magic happens. First, we are grabbing the circle. Then we are creating a new Intersection Observer. And finally, we are telling the observer to observe the circle element. If we save this code and load our page, we're going to get an error. The reason why is because if we think about it, our code is just observing the circle. But we don't want to only observe the circle. We want to also be notified when the circle enters or exits the screen of the user. That is why when we create an intersection observer, we must give it a function that will be called when an element enters or exits the screen of the user. We would put that that function as the first argument of the intersection observer constructor. And as you can see, the function receives the items that entered or exit the screen on the first parameter, which for now we are just going to console log. When we refresh the page and open the console, we will immediately see an array of intersection observer entry appear. An intersection observer entry is information about the element that we are watching that entered or left the screen of the user. If we open that array and look at the first item, we will see an object like this. Here we have information about the target and intersection like the bounding client rect object that gives us the x and y coordinates and size of the target, in this case, the circle, or the intersection rect object that gives us the x and y coordinates and size of only the visible area of the target. The one we care about is the is intersecting property. This tells us if the circle is visible on the screen or not. As you can see, is intersecting is initially false since the circle isn't on the screen. Now we are going to slowly scroll down the page and the moment the circle starts to be a little bit visible, we will see another array in our console containing one item, our circle, but this time with the property is intersecting set to true. To make our life easier, we will change the code a little bit. Here, all we are doing is going through each item of the list of items. We are checking if they are visible. If they are, we are console logging the element and the text is visible. Here is where if you are building an infinite scrolling, you will call your API to get more posts. Our console now looks like this. As you can see, the intersection observer is very exact. I say that because if we scroll down the page slowly, the moment just a tiny pixel of the circle comes into the screen, the intersection observer will run our code and tell us the circle is visible. To configure our intersection observer to wait until at least half of the circle is visible to fire our code, we can change our code to look like this. On the second argument of the intersection observer constructor, we can pass some options. And one of them is threshold. Threshold is a number between zero and one. The default is zero, which means that as soon as one pixel of the circle is visible, we will be notified. If we change it to 0.5, that means that only when 50% of our circle is visible, then we will be notified. If we set it to one, it would mean waiting for 100% of the circle to be visible for the code to fire. As you can see, it works like a charm. And we now have to scroll until more than half of the circle for our code to fire. And that's it. Those are the basics of Intersection Observer. It is now our job to combine this API with CSS classes to build something 
awesome. Like this, for example, where as we scroll up and down, the elements in our list appear from the bottom and disappear at the top with a beautiful animation. That effect is easy to accomplish. Here is the HTML. On the CSS, each div is a square with a background color, a border and a border radius. Each div, by default, has an opacity of zero and it is transformed to make it look a little bit big. Then we have a class called Visible. This class will scale our square to normal size and give it an opacity of one. On our JavaScript, we are grabbing all the squares, then we are creating an intersection observer and we are checking if the square is visible on the screen or not. If it is, we are adding the visible class. And if it isn't, we are removing it. It is just a game of adding and removing class names. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you learned something new. If you did, like this video and subscribe to the channel. And before I go, I wanted to let you know that we have launched a new community program called the 10 Week Study. It is a program where instead of studying alone and giving up in the middle, we have daily code challenges and quizzes to practice what we learn. And we do it all together. We have a Discord server, weekly online calls, and we also meet offline to play some games and have pizza and beer. Right now, registration is open for two programs. One is the Web 10 Week Study study that is for absolute beginners where we learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node.js, Express and MongoDB. And number two is the Flutter 10 weeks study where we will learn Dart, Flutter, Flutter animations and Firebase by building seven different mobile apps. Click the link below to learn more details and how to join. Onjana, kamsa hago, sarang See you on the next one. Bye bye.